it's personality disorder series and today i'm going to do obsessive compulsive personality disorder now when i was first looking at all the personality disorders i was trying to figure out because um i had covered some prior to announcing doing this series and i said oh i can't do this because i already did ocd but as i go on reading about it um they said that obsessive compulsive personality disorder is often confused with an anxiety with an anxiety disorder called obsessive compulsive disorder ocd however they aren't the same so i said oh okay i covered ocd in one of my videos it's the one i did at the library but i did not cover obsessive compulsive personality disorder ocpd so i'm good to go on this <laughs> all right so what is it you know what i mean i thought like it was ocd you know and just go look up obsessive compulsive just look up ocd obsessive compulsive disorder um under my videos and you will see one that i did at the library and i'm not going to go into any of that because this is not that and i already covered that get it <laughs> all right obsessive compulsive personality disorder is a personality disorder that's characterized by extreme perfectionism order and neatness so who do i the first person that comes to mind is a fictional character and i'm thinking of um felix unger remember um oscar madison and felix under who was it the odd couple um about the two divorced men who um shared in apartments and felix was a really neat one and oscar was you know the sloppy one but anyway as as i'm reading this this is the first well fictional person that comes to mind any of you old fogies like me might remember the odd couple it was one of my favorites about the two divorced men one was wicked neat you know a perfectionist everything had to be in order and the other one was a sloth <laughs> people with ocpd don't get it confused with ocd ocpd will also feel a severe need to impose their own standards on their on their outside environment sounds like someone very difficult to live with okay let's see the people who have this personality disorder have these characteristics. They find it hard to express their feelings. Well, I mean, that just covers a lot of people. Not everyone is very good at expressing their feelings. Um, they have difficulty forming and maintaining close relationships with others. Well, that's part of borderline personality right there. <laughs> so, uh, they're hardworking. But their obsession with perfection can make them inefficient. So they're like, you know, perfectionists. They, oh my God, imagine having one as a boss. Yeah, you would, nothing would be good enough for them. And they'd want everything like yesterday. They often feel righteous, indignant, and angry. They often face social isolation. Well, you can imagine if someone is such a perfectionist, whether they're, you know, God forbid they're your boss or your friend or your spouse or your child or your parent. Can you imagine how difficult living with someone like that would be? It, it would be like a constant struggle, you know, like, you know how some people hate when men leave the toilet uh, bowl seat up or something like that. It would be every little nitpicking thing. Maybe my mother had this. She was like that. I mean, you if you left a crumb on her counter or her table, like we're talking a crumb, like maybe you need a microscope. Uh, what do you call it? Um, a magnifying glass, not a microscope. Well, you could put it under a microscope too, right? <laughs> to see it. Like it would probably be like that little... You see that? You can't even see it. Yeah, that little crumb on my laptop here. But, so that's why they're such perfectionists. They drive everyone batty. You know, that's why they would probably, you know, 
be, you know, in isolation. They have, they can experience anxiety that occurs with depression. Now, of course, if someone is, you know, a perfectionist like that, they're going to have anxiety because this is an imperfect world. We are imperfect people. Come on. You got this, this disorder, right? And you're expecting perfection from people, from, from just life, from everything. You're not going to get it. Okay. Because it just doesn't exist. So it must be very difficult for these people, you know, so that would be, that would bring on intense anxiety. I would, I can only imagine expecting everything to be just so perfect, ordered, you know, neat. All right. OCPD, yeah, well, I've already said is confused with the obsessive compulsive disorder, which I already covered. People with OCPD have no idea that anything's wrong with the way they think or behave. This is awful, like, awful, um, awfully. <laughs> There we go. This is awfully like narcissism in the fact that narcissistic people don't realize they're, they're not narcissistic. They think there's nothing wrong with them. So they're saying people who have this disorder don't think there's, you know, anything wrong. They probably think, what do you mean? You know, I just want things done right, you know? <laughs> they probably don't see, I'm a hard worker. What are you talking about? You're lazy, you know? Um, I work hard, you know? I want everything, you know, this way and that, you know, they probably can't see that there's something wrong with that or there's something wrong with them. Where the OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, I kind of thought there's something wrong with me that, you know, I have to straighten out the pillows on the couch every minute, you know, things like that, or continually washing your hands or, you know, you can't have, um, but like, you know, doing something or like obsessive thoughts that keep coming in your head over and over and over again, like checking, did I shut the lights out, uh, lights off? Or did I unplug the iron when I went out? Oh my God. Like checking something over and over. That's not a sign of perfectionism. That's like, that's more obsessive compulsive disorder, you know? Let's go more into this. Okay. Um, who is at most risk for this? Men are twice as likely as women to be diagnosed with this personality disorder. And like I said, if anyone remembers, you know, Felix Unger of The Odd Couple of that, you know, when was that on the 70s? I think it was the 70s. I'm not sure. But yeah, he's a guy, right? Um, I'm just reading it says twice as likely as women. I'm not being, you know, judgmental here. I'm just telling you what this health line um, is saying. According to the Journal of Personality Assessment, between 2 and 7% of the population has OCPD, making it the most prevalent personality disorder. This is, uh, I think, a little different from the last one, the schizozoid. You know, that was kind of low, 2 or 3% of the population. This is saying 2 to 7, all the way up to 7%. Those with existing mental health diagnosis are more likely to be diagnosed with OCPD. So if you have something else, maybe depression, maybe the anxiety, another, you know, um, existing mental health diagnosis. You might also have this, that, that, you know, that comes along with that, that you, you know, like the anxiety and depression, they say that you can get if you have OC, OCPD. All right. What are the symptoms of obsessive compulsive personality disorder? Perfectionism to the point that it impairs the ability to finish tasks. Yeah, I know I don't have this because I'm the opposite. Um, I want things done, you know, and I want things like done yesterday, but I'm not a perfectionist. I'd rather, you know, get it done, even if it means it's compromised. See the difference? These people who have OCPD, they don't finish tasks because they're so perfectionist that... You know, they have to go over everything with a fine tooth comb over and over and over again. They have to make sure everything is just absolutely perfection. That they never finish anything because, you know, I mean, it's kind of hard to get something, uh, you know, that perfect. Where I say, just let's, let's finish it, even if it isn't perfect, for the sake of saying we did it. See, that's where... I, 
where my obsessiveness is. I want it done knowing that I should have went over it again. Knowing that it's not perfect. Like, like my books, right? I can't afford an editor and an agent. A lot of people would not um, self-publish or put a book out in the market until it was close to perfection. Not perfection. Me, I when I want something out there, I, I just want to get it out there. You know, if I have an idea... I want it. I just want it out there, even though I know, hey, I haven't looked it over. I haven't even read through it once. See what I mean? I just want to put it out there, uh, even knowing that it's it's not going to be anywhere. It's going to have lots of flaws. So I'm the opposite of that. Stiff, formal, or rigid mannerisms. Mannerisms. I don't think I'm stiff. I'm pretty like. Look at me. I'm Italian. I'm always look at my videos. I'm always talking with my hands. <laughs> Being extremely frugal with money. Hey, they ain't me. I don't have this. Frugal with money? Are you kidding? I spend money like anything. I I don't save. The, my problem is the opposite of this, okay? Just ask my husband. I don't save money, okay? I'm not frugal at all, okay? If I want something, I just go for it. Like, I spent double the money. I spent 14 grand on plane tickets because I wanted to try Economy Plus. It would have cost me seven grand to go to Paris for two people as opposed to 14 grand, double. I never flew anything but Economy my whole life. I'm almost 60. It's a, it's a seven hour flight to Paris and I hate flying. And it's overnight. And I can't sleep in those coach seats trapped in like sardines. I said, let I can't afford business or first class. Obviously, that's twenty grand. Obviously, I couldn't afford that. It was a big, humongous splurge and a, a big, humongous, humongous disappointment that I'd never do again. But someone else would never do that. They would never say, "I'm not throwing all that money away. I'm going to go economy." But that's what I've always done my whole life. I just wanted to try it once. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm not frugal. Get get the drift here. All right, extreme attention to detail. Nah, not really. Read my books and you'll see. Excessive devotion to work at the expense of family or social relationships. Nope. Uh -uh. I always make time, especially for my handicapped son. I always make time for my family. A certain time I shut the computer off, like say around dinner, I don't know, 4.35, maybe 5 o'clock. And then that is it. There is no computer nothing on the weekend there's no computer after like one o'clock there's no computer um so i'm not a workaholic trust me <laughs> if i was i'd probably have a lot more money hoarding worn or useless items i got rid of a lot of stuff yeah since i don't do karaoke anymore um, all that stuff, though, all those wigs, I had like over two dozen wigs. I had like, oh my God, ball gowns. I mean, I had all sorts of masks. I had like tons and tons and tons of it. Dresses, you know. And I got rid, I got rid of a, a, a humongous amount of stuff. I cleaned my closet, uh, not down here, but um, not, not down here in the basement. But in my bedroom, my closet is clean. So, yeah, I, I I hoard some stuff, but I'm maybe partially guilty of that, but not, not totally. Uh, an overwhelming need for order. Maybe a little bit there. A rigid adherence to rules and regulation. A fixation with lists. I don't know about that. An inability, probably like lists to get things done. You know, like, what am I going to do today? Okay, I already done yard work, exercise. You know, you write down everything you got to do and like you check it off. Dump, 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 dump. You know what I mean? I mean, if someone is obsessive, they can write lists and make sure like everything is checked off. Everything is done on that list, you know. Let's see. An overwhelming need for order. 
I'm kind of like chaotic. I don't, I don't think I, I have some order in my life. I do have some order, but not, I wouldn't say an overwhelming um, order in my life. A sense of righteousness about the way things should be done. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. A rigid adherence to moral and ethical codes. <laughs> Read my books. I had affairs. I've stole. Uh, I drove drunk. I read it adherence to moral and ethical codes. That's not me. Yeah. OCPD is diagnosed when symptoms impair your ability to function and interact with others. I think that goes for all of the personality disorders. It interferes with our life. It interferes with our relationships with others. And that's how you know, hey, look. I have a problem here. How is it treated? Your therapist will likely use a three-pronged approach to treatment, which includes illicit medication, illicit cognitive behavior therapy, um, relaxation training. Um, what's the outlook for people with this personality disorder? It may be better that than the outlook for other personality disorders. The treatment can help give you greater awareness of how the symptoms can adversely affect others, drive people like Looney Tunes. Um, if you have OCPD, you may be less likely to become addicted to drugs or alcohol, which is common with other personality disorders, like us borderlines, who I like to drink. So that's interesting that, you know, if you have this, you're less likely to have an alcohol or drug problem. Interesting. Interesting point there. What do you think? Do you know anyone with this? I mean, I'm not, again, I learned from doing these videos because, you know, I knew all about OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, because damn, I have that. I've had that. I mean, you know, I've had it much worse than I do now. But, you know, this, I don't have this. I'm reading, I'm reading it all to you. And I'm learning more about this. And, you know, and it's not me. This isn't me. But maybe it's you. Or maybe you know someone um, who has this. So, let me know. Okay? I think I covered most of it. Uh, but it, I can understand, I can understand why it drives people crazy um, being around someone like this who, you know, is overly neat, overly orderly, a perfectionist, um, kind of like self-righteous with the morals and everything has to be, you know, you know, just, you know, dot all your I's, cross all your T's and walk that, you know, toe the line, someone like you have to toe the line with all the time. I can definitely understand, like, that would drive someone batty. And you certainly wouldn't want a boss like that. Oh, my God, forget it. You never get a raise. <laughs> All right. Until next time, join me for my series on personality disorders.